My name is Paul Hammond. I'm 56 years old. My junkie dolphus. I've been collecting junk for quite a while. I've got a little bit of everything here. Quite a few vehicles, a lot of refrigerators, stoves, uh, used appliances, some scrap metal, stuff I've collected uh, over the years. I'm Paul Hammond, Jr. I'm Paul's son. Uh, when you first pull up to the yard, uh, you kind of round a corner, and when you get get there, you can start seeing his junk collection. I mean, that's the best way to put it on that aspect. I guess um, hoarding uh, is one of the definitions of what I do. I, my intentions were to, most of it, uh, scrap metal, to haul it off and make a little bit of money. Uh, part of my problem is when I did start collecting stuff, I didn't want to get rid of it. And it's gotten overwhelming to the point that uh, sometimes it's difficult to think about it. The court system got involved uh, a couple years ago. There's two people in the neighborhood that actually started it. I uh, know who they are. One is an old lady across the street. They have nothing but time on their hands. I'm Mary Alice Adams. I live across the street from Paul. It's just an eyesore to the neighborhood. Everybody in the neighborhood would like to see it cleaned up. And I've watched this for the last year or two, several years, just grow into nothing but a junkyard. And I don't think this subdivision was laid out to have junkyards in it. Basically, they called him repeatedly to actually get the county on his butt. Finally, some commissioner took notice in it, and now they're doing something about it. And I'm glad they are. And he didn't care. That was his attitude when I asked him what he was doing. He says, it's my property. I do what I want to with it. And I said, well, I don't think the law works that way, but we'll see. I see my grandkids uh, just about every day. Um, I usually go over there in the afternoons. Usually it's Sundays, he grabs uh, one or two of my my kids and he goes out dumpster hopping. He's something he can do with the kids, they enjoy it. Yep. They enjoy helping their grandpa do anything he can. Thank you, buddy. I enjoy being with them. Two snacks. Yep. My yep. grandkids have uh, been about the only thing I really look forward to every day in the last few years. Pretty much uh, the rest of everything else I do has become a problem in my life. My name is Matt Paxton. I'm the owner of Clutter Cleaner. Uh, we are a company that specializes in homes that have been affected by hoarding, addiction, and grief. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you. Good morning. Thank you guys for coming. We got a lot of work to do today. You guys are picking up the trash. If there's any scrap metal, leave it. We got three days to do it. The house way over there. That's where we're going. All right. Let's do it. All right got uh, about four different crews all around the, the yard hitting four different corners. They're going to walk slowly towards the house as they pick trash out from all the scrap metal. Our main concerns will be sheer volume. There's just a lot of, a lot of work to do with not a whole lot of time to do it. Um, we will watch some anxiety levels of Paul Sr. He's going he's gonna to get nervous throughout the day, so we'll make sure he maintains control throughout the entire process. Pace yourself today. That's very important. you got to pace it. I mean, we're all wheezing already. We got one load. We probably got to do four more loads of this today. But we got to pace ourselves. That's not as hot, huh? Uh-huh. I'm not as young as I used to be. Well, one good hard day's work, it takes me two to recuperate. 
And uh, that's definitely a problem. Just trying to get it done in time. Quick. <laughs> Uh, well, I got a couple plastic boxes and stuff, which That's are right. usable. Yeah, but we gotta let it go, man. Is it usable? Yes. Do we have time to keep it? No. Walked away from that dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you do that? Why'd you decide to just walk away? Need to. Don't want to. Need to. Yeah. Sorry. Good job. <laughs> Good job. was even lower than I thought it was going to be. No. So. 60 not unreasonable. No, he wanted 10. Huh? I, I said no thanks. Penny a pound. Penny a pound. Yeah. That damn low? The problem with Paul here now is he has been offered a pretty, in his mind, a bad offer. He is really, really upset. I ain't giving my stuff away. I ain't going to do it. Can't. Wait. I'll fight with the downtown. Well, I, he can play his game what? if he wants you to, but I'm not giving my that. stuff away. I, I understand I can't. that. I know, I know you can't, and I understand that. The company that uh, knows the judge, they give me half a cent a pound. <laughs> Where I can get four and a half cents a pound if I do it myself. Scrap metal is worth nothing right now, but what the company is offering <laughs> is even less than nothing, almost. He is shell shocked. He's very upset. He really admitted this morning that the only reason he keeps this stuff is for his grandkids and for their life savings. And so that's what he's going through mentally. It's not that he's greedy and wants the money. He's going through, holy cow, I can't support my four grandkids. Tie your shoes, sweetie. It's hard to explain. went as far as we could on the push. Now it's just support, straight up support. We're gonna do whatever he needs to do. We're gonna hustle. I'm concerned about their energy level and their ability to continue to work. We also have uh, kind of subpar equipment you'll see behind me. It may or may not work. I'm not gonna know till tomorrow night if he's going to jail or not. It's gonna be a long day. Yeah, yeah it's just a paperwork to prove that the cars aren't stolen. <laughs> so what this is. Hopefully today I can get at least the cars that's out by the road out of here. Um, maybe a couple more. All of this stuff here can go right into the scrap. Oh, that's aluminum and copper. That little bit right there is worth more than a couple of cars. The aluminum. We can't leave it there over the weekend. It has to go. I just think it needs to go with the cars and the scrap metal. It can't. I mean, it's worth 10 times what the other stuff is. So it's going to have to go in the back somewhere and maybe six months. If price comes up, I'll even get more for it. This is very valuable. All this copper right here is extremely valuable. But if you're in jail, it's not valuable. We gotta fill it by 3.30 regardless, man. If we don't fill it, they're taking it empty. We don't make no money. That's what I want those refrigerators in there. That's fine, but we need you helping us here, man, getting this stuff in. Ah! got a day and look how much we still got to do I mean thing is this is like if, the, if, if they come in today this this isn't gonna pass I'm not trying to be a jerk I'm just trying to show the reality of what time we're at now. yeah we're, we're one day if we get to the house you're out of the clear okay. we're not to the house the rest of us metal just about well I guess what I'm saying is some we got to start throwing metal away now because if we don't clear this space out you're going to jail it's the reality. I wish you'd lose that term. I can't help it. I well, know. I, I know, know it sucks. That's but my alternative. But I know. 
I, I don't want to keep hearing it. Well, I, you have to hear it, because you haven't, I don't think you realize it yet. I know, I've been there. I know, but I 90 days. I know that days, judge better than you do. Yes, you do. I know exactly what he's going to say. And it ain't going to matter if I got the whole damn lot cleaned. He's still well, going to be an ass. Then why should I even come back tomorrow, then? It's, it's just a waste of time, man. He's not going to let it go. I mean, he's going to jail. It's Thursday afternoon, and he's going to jail. He's not, I mean, he doesn't get it. He's on his own now. He'll go on his decisions, and he'll end up in jail. It's really a shame. It doesn't seem to bother you, the timeline. It doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, yeah, I understand there is a timeline, and I know the consequences are not away. I mean, you've done a great job, an amazing job. We're going to be clean to here today. Yeah. Your grandkids have been running this yard this weekend. Yep. That's kind of cool. That's it. Is that it right there? I like it. That's a good enough reason to me. You were here what? I was here Tuesday. Three days ago. Yeah. Four days ago. There were how many? 17 cars? Something, Something like, like that. that. It was full out here. I mean, yesterday, you couldn't see the fence yesterday. No, I didn't know there was a fence back there. Well, and there were all the tires. Gone. Yeah. So this whole yard will be open. Again, it's a start. We right. Know it's not a finish. Right, and that's what the judge wants to see is you know, serious effort. But yeah, you know, before this is all said and done, you know, this is will have to be cleaned up. She wasn't quite as happy as I expected, but it's a lot better than I expected. This isn't done yet. Yeah. Well, I hope this uh, that fire date he did was all the jail time you'll ever have to serve. Paul's an awesome guy, man, and he did everything and more that I asked him to do. I couldn't have done it without him. I mean, he's pushed me a couple times. Most of them I needed. That's what it's all about. When it's all over with, they're gonna be all what's left. This is what Paul wants. He wants to have a place for his grandkids to play. This is why Paul has collected all of this stuff. In his mind, it was savings for his grandkids. It'll be great when it's done completely. I don't have to worry about it anymore. being a fan of hoarders and subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.